Okay, right, so question one here, fractions. Now, when you're adding fractions, the denominators, okay, that, that is the bottom numbers, they need to be the same in order to add them. Now, they're not the same here, so we can't add them as it stands. So what you do is you change both fractions so that they have the same denominator. Now, all you've got to do is think of a multiple that 3 and 9 go into, a common multiple, okay? And if you think about it, 9 actually works. So we, so we can keep this as it is, but we'll change the second fraction so that it's out of 9, okay? Now, 3 goes into 9, doesn't it? All you've got to do is make it 3 times bigger. So if you times 3 by 3, you get 9. So I've made the bottom number bigger. I've got it to 9. But if I make the bottom number bigger, just make sure then the fractions are equal. I've got to make the top bigger as well. So if I multiply the bottom by 3, I've got to multiply the top by 3 as well. So I get 3 ninths. So now instead of adding these two together, I can add that one and this one together. So it's 5 ninths and 3 ninths will equal 8 ninths. Okay? So you just add the top numbers. Now number 2. This time take away, but it's the same principle. You can't take away because the bottom numbers are different. So let's get the bottom numbers the same. Let's think of a common multiple. The number that 8 and 4 go into. Well, again, 8, isn't it? They both go into 8. So we can keep the first fraction as it is. Okay? For the second fraction, we'll change this out of 8. Of course, what are we doing to 4 to get to 8? Well, we're doubling it, aren't we? So we need to double the top. So double the bottom, we get 8, double the top, we get 2. So now we get the 3 eighths stays as it is, but the 1 quarter becomes 2 eighths. And then you can take these away, so you just take the top ones away, so you get 1 eighth. Okay, question 3. Again, adding, now you probably think a bit better this now, thinking, let's change the bottom numbers, let's think what they both go into. Well, they both go into 10, don't they? So you can keep that one as it is, let's change that one. So to get that out of 10, you've got to double. And you've got to double it, times it by 2. So you do the same then to the top, you get 6. So this becomes 7 tenths plus 6 tenths instead. Now when we add these together, okay, you add the top numbers, you get 13 tenths. And what you'll notice here is that this fraction is improper, okay, or a top heavy as it's often called. What that means is, the number on the top is more than the number on the bottom, and that means we've got more than one hole. If you think about it, 13 tenths would mean we have, actually have more than a hole. We have, in this case, one hole, and there'll be an extra few tenths left over. The way to do this, of course, is 10 goes into 13 once, and there's three left over. 10 goes into 13 once, three left over. So that's one hole and three tenths. So that's what that is as a mixed number. Okay, with question four, right, with question four, now, we need to get the bottom numbers the same, all right? Um, now, in this case, 2 doesn't go into 3, okay? So we need to change both of these. We need to think of a common multiple of 3 and 2. Well, if we multiply 2 and 3, you get 6, don't you? 6, they both go into 6. So we could change these so that was 6. So let's change the first one to sort of 6. What are we doing? Timesing it by 2, yeah? We're doubling it. So you times the top by 2, so you get 4. And this one, let's change this to a set of 6. What are we doing? Times in this by 3, isn't it? Times that by 3, you times the top by 3, so you get 3 6. So now instead of adding these, we'll add the ones we just worked out. 4 6 and 3 6. Okay? Add the top ones are 7 over 6. Okay, 7 over 6. Again, we've got a top heavy more than a whole. 6 goes into 7 once with 1 left over 6. Okay, we've answered that there.